Next question is from Pat of Blanc. What are your thoughts on DNA fitness and nutrition tests? The ones that reportedly tell you the optimal way for you to eat and train. This is like the uh, like blood type stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, here's why I'm not a fan. Um, It'd be great if like we could just pull formulas and it worked completely. Right? It's just okay. There's so many factors yeah. on an individual basis that on a, uh, determine only, how hard to work out. Not even individual do. basis on a daily individual basis. Oh yeah, like that's like yeah. you can get tested for something that tells you train this way. And maybe it's extremely accurate, but one night of bad sleep, one night or three days of under consuming calories, three days of overtraining completely changes it's all totally of that. Different right, animal. right. Plus DNA we know now is not as fixed as we thought before. It can actually express itself differently depending on your lifestyle. So I, I mean, what's the term that the that DNA uh, loads the bullets, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't remember the term. Uh, there's a there's a term for it where you can uh, epigenetics. Epigenetics. Thank you, Doug. Yeah. So your lifestyle can affect that as well. Here's my experience with this kind of stuff. I, I, I had clients who were you know very successful, wealthy. They were always on the cutting edge, and they would do these tests, and then I would notice it affect their decision making when they train. Like they would stop listening to their body. Well, my DNA test said that you know I respond well to high intensity training, so. That's what I'm going to continue doing. Or my DNA test said these foods are probably best for me, even though they're ignoring the fact that they're getting gastro issues or digestive issues as a result. Uh, listen to your body is, is the best advice I can give. Now, here's where I think it might be valuable for people who are very in tune with their bodies, people who are self-aware, maybe very advanced. Then it can give you a little bit of insight, uh, but you got to use it properly. Otherwise, you end up like you know, like we're saying, you go into your workouts, you go into your diet, and you you tend to be blind. Oh, it says I'm supposed to eat low carb, high fat. Uh, you know, I know I feel like shit, but that's what my DNA test says. So I'm just going to continue do, continue doing that. Well, what's the what's the saying that you always say that a a um, an inferior program done consistently is is better than the superior program done inconsistently? That's another one, right? Yeah. So it's like. Um, you know, could this be like, maybe this is like, maybe this is cutting edge stuff that we are, we're, uh, we're learning more and more and it does have some value, right? Um, it still doesn't trump that. It still doesn't trump you being consistent with everything else. Somebody who is being consistent with their training and dieting is going to be better than the, the guy or the girl who follows some DNA protocol for three weeks and then is inconsistent for another week, right? Yeah. So You know why that's important to, to say, Adam, is because let's say you're somebody that uh, you do your DNA. I'm going to make something up. I'm sure they don't say this, but I'll make it up. And your DNA test says the best form of cardio for you is sprinting. This is the kind of cardio you should do. But you love swimming. You absolutely love swimming. But you're like, you know what my DNA test, and you hate sprinting, but you're like, I'm going to do what my DNA test says. I'm going to do this form of exercise I hate. Right. As a result, you become inconsistent because right. you do this form of exercise you absolutely hate in replace of the one that you love that you would probably be more consistent doing. So mm -hmm. I think that's where it's very valuable. Right. That's the same thing that we make the case about, you know, people saying that, uh, you know, because I think there's stuff that's came out now too, like depending on when you were, what time of day you were born, you're more likely to see better results training in the morning versus the really? evening. Really? Yeah, yeah. I've heard this. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So that's came out recently, like where, you know, depending on what, what you know, and everybody's different, right? So, but again, none of that matters if this hour in your day is where you can be the most consistent because that's what your schedule allows you to. That is more important than what some test says is the most optimal for you. It'd be interesting if like, if you could trace back and, and see like the epigenetics of, uh, you know, like what you might be predisposed to, uh, you know, if that was really the case, especially with like nutrition, if you could avoid certain things that like would then, because a lot of times people don't know like what's underlying, uh, you know, that's been passed on, but I just don't know that they've been able to nail all that well, down. The other thing that's hard about that is to be able to tease out because there's, there's stuff to prove this, right? So any uh, someone just following a pro protocol is going to be more successful than somebody not. Like the whole blood type thing, oh, right? Oh, yeah, so totally. I, you know, I, read that, I read that book when that was popular, and I it was hard for me to say, okay, are these people having success because they're following their blood type diet? Or, or are they having, just following something? Exactly, because mm -hmm. before they were eating pizza and whatever mm -hmm. and not really paying attention, then they switched over to this blood type diet, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh my God. Now Adam, I have structure. Yeah, my energy yeah. feels good and this and that. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, was it really that? And that's the same thing that goes for when people switch to carnivore or keto or vegan. It's like, 
is it really the diet that is making you feel this way? Or maybe or you it, cut out this food. Right, or yeah. that you got rid of something that was an offender to your body before, and now you feel so much better. Yeah, so and, it's hard to tease that and out. And you know what's yeah. happening with these DNA tests is that people are getting, because there's there are some DNA, uh, like there are some results that will come out that will say, you are very likely for to get this type of cancer. I think there's one, I think it's called the BRAC mm. uh, gene or whatever that can show. I think it puts you at like 80% uh, chance of getting breast cancer. But then there's other stuff that says you are predisposed to this or predisposed to that. And then you might have an uncle or an aunt who had that particular thing. You know what I've been reading that's happening is that people will get these tests and then it freaks them out. Mm. Then they're stressed out. They're so worried. Oh, yeah. Then they take these these steps that they didn't they sh didn't need to take to, you know, help themselves. They actually cause themselves more problems. Mm -hmm. This reminds me of the studies that show that you know men respond to intensity better than women, and women respond better to volume. But here's the deal: as a trainer, the, the when I train the individual, I don't care. I'm mm. watching the person. Right. And if the person does well doing something, that's what we're going to do. I don't care what the studies say. I don't care what the general idea is. If you do better doing this thing and it's working for you, this is what we're going to do.